Okay, so the plan is that now after uh, giving this uh, uh, short introduction to Bitcoin, uh, I'm going to talk about mining pools. Uh, there are some, there were some questions during the break, uh, so maybe some things were not very, uh, completely clear. So uh, let me just tell you still about this previous lecture. So one thing is, uh, uh, what happens if there is uh, uh, there are more transactions and they don't fit? Like from the last ten minutes, we had a lot of transactions and they don't fit in the block, right? So the thing is, it's up to the miner who mines the block to include some transactions or not. And if there are more than if they don't fit in the block, then he will not include them, and they will just wait somewhere. They will just be they, all, all the miners saw that there are some transactions and they saw which ones were added and which not. And those that were not added are simply waiting. If you are uh, in interested in like making your transaction go through, and it's not accepted for a long time, then what you can always do is you can increase the fee, right? And this will, should give incentives for the miners to actually include your transaction in the next block. Okay? So if your transaction is there for an hour and nothing happens, you just give a slightly higher fee and you see how what happens then. Okay? And eventually, I think that the hope is that this will be become like, uh, no, like a market that would say uh, uh, that would make people like offer higher and higher fees so that they uh, have their transactions included. And uh, cu currently, it is like this that there are some official recommendations about what should be the fees. So, so, uh, uh, so some, uh, uh, so the B Bitcoin Foundation and. Uh, has some uh, recommendations like w which fee you should put for which transaction. And actually, interestingly, uh, small transactions require higher fees because uh, they want to discourage people from like denial of service kind of things. So that when, when you put a lot of small transactions, and one more thing, more be as an anecdote, is that like a like a month ago there was like a huge transaction worth like a hundred dollars or something like this when someone confused the fee with <laughs> the main <laughs> part of the transaction, so he paid like. Instead of paying like a thousand dollars equivalent uh, and giving a fee of like ten cents, he paid ten cents and he gave <laughs> one million dollar fee. But then there was something like the, the miner who found it promised that he will give, give this money actually back. So I don't know what happened at the end, but uh, but there is still the hope that if a miner is nice, then uh, he can. Well, maybe. Do you hear me? Okay. There is still a hope that if the miner is nice, then he will give you the money back if he makes some error. But of course, in principle, he doesn't need to do it. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, that's the beauty of, of, of the federalist system. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about mining pools, which is like an important thing because it, it basically, uh, some mining pools are coalitions of miners that mine together. And uh, I'll tell you why they do it and how they do it. Uh, and as usual, like as before, I'm going to focus more on like conceptual things. So like what is interesting there from like more scientific perspective, uh, because there are some very cool ideas there. In particular, it turns out that we can make like a coalition of miners that is uh, like also like distributed, so without any trusted server. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about security of Bitcoin or insecurity of Bitcoin. So I'm going to tell you some, show you in particular, I'm going to show you this academic attack on Bitcoin uh, that was published two years ago. Uh, okay, so mining pools are cartels of miners and the main reason why the uh, miners are interested in doing it is that uh, mining pools reduce the variance of their income. Okay? So I did this calculation like almost two years ago, but I think now it's kind of similar or even worse. Uh, so uh, as I told you, currently mining is done in hardware, and it was so two years ago. So you could buy like uh, some a miner, some, uh, some some machine that mines it was like one thousand worth one thousand dollars around, uh, and it had this power, so one point seven thousand gigahash per second, and that was the total hash rate of the system at that time. So that would be hundred sixty-six thousand seventy-six. Uh, so so we had, uh, around hundred sixty-six thousand times more was the total hash power of the system. Which, if you if you if you calculate in years, that would mean that your probability was like this: that essentially you would have to wait over three years, uh, more than three years, to actually mine a block. Okay? Uh, if I'm not mistaken in the calculation. So, so essentially, what I'm saying here is that if you, even if you buy an expensive um, uh, miner, you have to wait 
uh, three years to, to uh, on average, to, to mine a new block. Assuming the difficulty does not increase, but in fact, it usually increases. So it, it actually, it's, it's likely that if you buy, like, if you spend a thousand dollar on a machine uh, to mine, uh, you will actually never see any money out of it. Okay? And that's what people usually don't like because people want to have stable income. Okay? Um, so, so that's why they create uh, mining pools. Uh, and uh, uh, so mining pools are like coalitions where, say, we all come together and we say, okay, we'll be mining and we'll be sharing our income, so the variance will be smaller. Uh, so, uh, so some of these mining pools are operated centrally, so there's like a central server which uh, operates the mining pool. Some are also designed in a peer-to-peer way. And some of the mining pools charge fees for their services, so this is like their businesses. Uh, so for example, if the operator of the mining pool got 25 bitcoins from the new block, then he will give to everybody 25 bitcoins minus the fee. Okay? So the fee will be his, his income. Uh, uh, so in other words, the uh, uh, expected revenue, if you join a mining pool, is actually slightly lower than expected revenue from solo mining. Okay, solo mining is uh, when you mine yourself. Okay? So, so it's actually, so, so, so you have a slightly slower expected value, slightly more uh, lower expected value, but you also have a, a significantly lower variance. And for most of the people, it's okay. Actually, they like it more. Okay? Uh, Yeah, yeah. So, so, so if, if so, yeah, yeah. So, 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 if we are a mining pool and uh, we are like ten percent of, so, so if, if you are mining solo, you have like zero point zero zero one percentage of computing power. Then your chances of mining in the next year uh, block are, are very low. If you if you are in a mining pool that has like ten percent of computing power, then on average one in ten blocks will be mined by this mining pool. So one in ten blocks, once in ten blocks, you will get a small reward, proportionally to what is your proportion in the mining pool. Okay. So that's the whole the whole thing that you know it's not like expected value is not everything in life, right? Ex uh, you also care about variance. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes people prefer higher variance, like lotteries are like this. But uh, usually people don't want uh, uh, high variance; they want to have stable uh, income. Okay. And the tricky part is how to prevent uh, cheating by miners and how to reward the miners, right? So you want in general somehow the uh, uh, the reward to be fair so that people get uh, as much money as they deserve in some way and uh, 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 but you have to keep in mind that we are living in this world where everybody is, everything is peer to peer and any attack that is found can be directly translated to like uh, financial income while there is no concept of reputation right so in the real world people maybe not cheat, don't cheat because they don't want their reputation to be spoiled but uh, in this world, like nobody cares about the reputation because everybody's anyway is just his public key and like. So if I find an algorithm to cheat the mining pool, then I will do it because uh, I have nothing to lose. Right? So this is like a tricky part how to do it. And uh, let, let me say this are like popular mining pools from like half a year ago. Uh, they have some names. I think many of them are operated in China. Uh, so this is like the whole like share of 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 of, of, of mining pools in the world. Uh, yeah, uh, doesn't matter so much. Okay, so how to design a, a mining pool? Uh, so, uh, so let's have a simple idea. So, so I'm a, a mining pool operator, and here is an individual miner, and he gets a list of transactions pi and the hash of the last block, and uh, these transactions will include the uh, Coinbase transaction that transfers the reward to the mining pool operator. So now, the miner has to mine on this, so he got, so you remember, there were three, three components of, uh, uh, like, when I mine. So there was the transaction list, the hash, and the nonce, okay? So the miner has to find the nonce, but the rest he gets from the mining pool operator, okay? Including, he gets, let's say, he gets the transaction, the, the first transaction has to be, this money goes to the mining pool operator, okay? And he looks for the nonce, and he finds, once he starts, uh, uh, when he finds uh, non uh, such that this hash starts with n zeros, uh, where n is the current parameter, he uh, sends it to the operator, and uh, then uh, 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 each of the pool members uh, 
once, once one of the, the spool members finds a solution, each of them gets a, a reward that is uh, proportional to his work. Okay? Of course, the natural problem is how to verify uh, how uh, uh, much the, uh, the, the miner really worked. Okay? So how to do it, how to, how to be sure that someone really works? Because I can say, like, I work very hard for the mining pool. I could declare it, but in reality, I can do something completely different. I may not work at all, right? And I'm just uh, always unlucky, and actually, very likely, I will be unlucky. So, uh, so, so, so nobody will see that I'm cheating. So how to do it? Okay? So there is a simple idea. Uh, 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 and the idea is as follows: uh, that uh, okay, so we try. So this is like before, right? So so so, so we have this list of transactions, and uh, uh, we we start we we uh, we uh, look for a nonce. But then, most likely, every now and then, this guy, the miner, will find a, a, a partial solution. Right? So what's a partial solution? Partial solution is a solution which is almost correct, except that the number of zeros is smaller. Okay? So suppose he had like. He needed to have like 50 zeros, but uh, he found one with 20 zeros. Okay. But he will also submit such sol partial solutions. Okay. For some smaller. Uh, fine. So why he does it? Because it's a proof that he's working on it. Okay. So if I'm working on something, most likely I will not find a solution, but at least I will find a lot of partial solutions. So I will just keep on submitting them, and this will be a measure of uh, how much I worked. Okay. Clear? Uh, okay. So exactly, the amount of work is measured in uh, 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 in the number of partial solutions submitted. Okay? Yes. Why, why isn't it simpler just when someone finds, then you just send straight away the maximal and find it down so far? Uh, so you would say uh, if someone, so so you don't get you don't. Uh, produce, uh, you don't send anything, but if you have this moment when you uh, dec decide about uh, uh, share about the income, you would send the maximum partial solution. Uh, you would need a formula then that would say like, depending on what was the partial solution, and maybe that would also work. At least I don't know. I should think about it offline. Uh, yeah, it's a natural idea. I didn't think about it. Well, anyway, but by the way, what I'm saying now is that like, there is a nice paper from like a few years ago uh, 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 published online because this Bitcoin people are often just publish online and they don't care about publishing anyway. There is this guy uh, uh, from the Israeli Bitcoin community, many dozen, and, uh, and he has a paper. Uh, on an analysis, it's, it's, it's like a long paper about analysis of, of all possible uh, design of mining pools. So my, the slides are partly based on it, and I, I have a reference uh, later. Uh, it's on the slides somewhere, so you can, you can Google this paper. Uh, okay, so then, so, so, but the idea is pretty simple, right? So you just uh, uh, reward partial solutions, basically, okay? And this works as long as People don't change the mining pools, right? Why, why does it work? So if you have this, these are the, these are these are miners, and they have these are, these are their proportions of computing power. Okay, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four. So this, let's say it's like ten percent altogether. Okay, and then they they somehow they submit on a long period of time. They submit number of shares is proportional to their share, right? Uh, uh, to to their share in the, in the in the computing power. So the probability that this pool pool wins is this, right? Because this is like the total fraction they have, and the reward for P1, say this is P1, in case this mining pool wins, is uh, 25 bitcoins, right, times his proportion of the number of shares submitted, which is alpha one divided by the sum of all alphas, right? So more or less, it's expected a reward is multiply this by this, and you get 25 bitcoins times alpha one, which is exactly what he would expected value what he would get by solo mining, except that his variance is more than I could calculate the variance here, but actually many doesn't, doesn't need to take. Okay. okay, so this is the basic idea. 
But there is one problem with this method, this proportional method. The problem is that people can actually change mine inputs. Okay, so if you have a situation like this, that with time they mined uh, like this, right? They mined uh, uh, together, and then at some point these two guys, P1 and P2, decide to start a new pool. Right? If they start a new pool, then they are expected uh, revenue from this new pool. Like, uh, if you forget about the variance for a moment, but at some point it will stabilize. Uh, they expect value, uh, they expect revenue from the new pool, say they expect the revenue of P1 is alpha 1. Okay? It's for the same argument as before, right? It's just proportional to its competitive power. But he will also get the revenue from the old pool if it happens that this guy should have stayed in this pool, find the solution. Okay? You don't trust it. Yes, but yes, but you are still counted. Like when they will be, uh, if these two guys won, you will be still counted as the one who would get some contribute uh, some. Only if you provide the no, but you were, but no, but we we, we we sum up over like this ten minutes period or whatever, like what what, what time needed for uh, like uh, uh, the last block. Okay, so for 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 five five, five minutes, uh, I mine with these two uh, with these other guys, right? And the second, like, if in five minutes we don't find anything, then I switch to a new pool. Like, we start, these two guys start a new pool, okay? And then what they do is, like, there are two options. Either this pool, new pool wins. In this case, my uh, revenue is proportional to my competing power. Or this old pool wins. But there I will still be counted because I submitted a solution, like, five minutes earlier. For only half of the work. Uh, the only a provider for the work Yeah, but you see, it's... Like here, I'm getting proportional to my work from this, and here I'm getting something extra, okay? Okay. something small maybe, but because I already stopped mining there, but still I will be counted there as one of the kind of shareholders or whatever. Okay? I mean, this is not a formal thing, but this is just the way to show you the problem with this. Okay? And this is called pool hopping. Okay? And of course, uh, so basically, it's, it's, it's profitable to escape from pools which have already had lots of uh, shares because. Such pools have, in some sense, lots of mouths to feed, right? There are, still lo there are lots of people with, who, with whom you would share. And the thing is, of course, when people realize that it's possible, they started to do it automatic, right? So if you mine too long for a big uh, pool, then you have like a, uh, your miner will automatically start to mine with some others, okay? Right? Yeah, because uh, then you have to. You see, the thing is that you. you so this is a good question, actually. So the thing is that here, this guy, once you submit a partial solution, he checks if you put his coin-based transactions in this TI, right? So he will know if you were mining for him or for someone else. Okay? So that's this. Okay. So this is not like a formal thing, but the basic thing is that there is this problem. Okay. The pool hopping is profitable. Okay. And then a uh, solution is. Uh, do not reward each share equally. And uh, they have analysis, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to show it here. Uh, it's in this many's paper. Uh, so they have this concept of a score function, which basically, uh, uh, so every share gets a score. The score changes with time. And then the money that is divided is uh, proportional to uh, uh, how much uh, 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 to your t total score, okay? So, uh, so in some sense, proportional method is a method where the score is always one or always the same. And uh, what they, uh, 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 so, uh, so there is this method called slashes scoring uh, functions. Slash is one of the mining pools that was popular at some point. And they had this rewar rewarding function that was exponential in, uh, uh, in uh, 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 with time, okay. So with time, your value, you, your score will go exponentially, which means that this gives advantage to miners who joined late. Okay? So which means that if you if you are like submitted something at the beginning and then you you waited uh, you waited for uh, like then, then like you know, shares submitted recently will have higher score and uh, like eventually with time shares submitted early will will uh, will, will uh, get lower and lower value. Uh, uh, which somehow, uh, uh, well, I'm not going to show you this, but th 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 there is like a formal argument why it's better. Yes? What if you put uh, the pool owner uh, not inside your, when you mine it, 
Yes? Yeah, that's the thing. So, 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 yeah, yeah, that was basically what I said before. So, so the thing is, you. So, what it means that you mine for someone, okay? So, you mine for someone. Um, uh, uh, this uh, mining for someone means putting his uh, uh, coin base, like transaction that gives money to him, as the first transaction on the list. Okay? So, and. This is like the whole beauty of this uh, 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 Bitcoin thing, that you cannot change the list of transactions once you find uh, once you found the uh, uh, the nodes. Okay. Now, uh, when you uh, when you ask this, I, uh, there, there's one thing that is actually important, is that. So uh, I, I have slides later about this, but maybe it's time also now to say it. So so there is this question. Like some people believe that mining pools are bad, and I'm going to tell you why in a moment. Uh, and then the people had this idea, so let's make a currency where it's hard to design mining pools. Eh? And uh, how to do it? Make it like this, that precisely what you ask is possible. Eh? So that I can somehow detach the solution from, uh, uh, like I can, I can always change this, this, the, 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 this first transaction after I found the solution. Okay? So they make it like this, that it's, Miners can actually cheat the mining pool operators always, which means that nobody will start mining pools. Okay? And it's called non-outsourceable puzzles, and uh, like there's a paper on this, like uh, SNP a year ago. Yes. Yeah, but you anyway have this computing power now, right? So, uh, well, if you don't count the electricity, uh, well, and also you don't, you don't, you never really know when the solution will be found, right? So this is the whole thing that this mind, this, this is like, you know, the fact that you wait for five, five, five minutes doesn't mean that you are any closer to the solution, right? So, not clear what later means. So, yeah, maybe. So, uh, you know, there is this thing, uh, actually, this is not the only method. And there are people are, uh, like, uh, you should look at this paper of many. They, they have, like, lots of other methods. They have double exponential. Uh, they have variants of this. And they, they argue that this is better in some cases. I, I read it once, and I don't remember. It was a while ago. Uh, and maybe the case, and I think, actually, some people were later write, writing more papers about it. It's... Uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a nice research area. I mean, it's a research area for people who believe that nine pools are good, <laughs> uh, because some people believe they are bad. But uh, yeah, maybe there is still some place for research there, actually. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so then there is. Uh, uh, okay, there are other methods. So one is paper share. So the operator pays per each partial solution, no matter uh, 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 if he managed to extend the chain, right? So it's not that I divide the revenue for, between everyone. It's just that everybody who gives me a solution will be paid, partial solution will be paid something, okay? uh, So partial solution gets paid. And well, it's, it's a little bit more risky for the operator because operator needs to have reserves because maybe he will be having he will be paying for his partial solution without being rewarded himself. Uh, uh, so he needs to have some money reserves, and that's why probably he would charge a higher fee or things like this. Uh, other methods, yeah, there are this geometric method, double geometric method, paper, last answers. Uh, if you want, you can look at this many papers. Um, yeah, yeah, there are also improved pa paper. This is, yeah, this is the paper. Yeah, and then there are, there are some other papers. Uh, Okay, so how secure are these methods? Uh, so basically, the thing is, we can assume that the pool operator is honest somehow. Okay, why? Because he has a reputation. So these are like established uh, companies somehow. Right. So trusting a little bit the operator is okay, uh, but of course, uh, trusting the miners from the point of view of the operator that's something completely different because the miners are just individuals with no reputation. Right. In particular, they can do this pool hopping, they can do whatever they want. Uh, 
So basically, the model here is the more full operator is trusted, the minors are not trusted. Yeah. And uh, there are these uh, uh, two, uh, 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 two attacks that are possible. Uh, uh, both are weight uh, based on some uh, withholding certain uh, uh, blocks. They are, in some sense, uh, similar to the selfish mining attack that we'll discuss later. So sabotage is a, is a, uh, it's a nice idea. Uh, well, it's something that's very hard to avoid. So sabotage is like this, that uh, I'm submitting partial solution, but once I find a complete solution, uh, uh, I, I, I don't submit it. Okay? So why would I do it? Yeah, no, I, I throw it out. I just, I, I don't tell anyone that I found a complete solution. Sorry? No, no, I'm, I'm, in, I'm submitting partial solution, I'm rewarded for each partial solution, but the only one that the, the, the operator really cares about is not, sub, uh, I don't submit. Okay, so, so the, there's only one reason to do it, basically. Yeah, I want the pool to lose money, okay? Uh, uh, so the dishonest miner doesn't earn anything. He actually loses a little bit. But the reward for a complete solution is not higher or not much higher than the reward for a, a partial solution, because otherwise we would be back to solo mining, right? I mean, you can make like this, that partial solutions get like some small reward, and complete solution gets a slightly higher reward as a special bonus for the guy who found it, okay? But we cannot make it really high, because then it would be like basically back to solo mining, right? So, so the thing is, the pool of this money, the dishonest miner doesn't uh, add many, uh, anything, actually he loses a little bit. But the adversary's goal is just to make the mining pool bank, uh, bankrupt, okay? Why? Because maybe he is operating a com uh, competing mining pool, okay? He doesn't like this one, okay? And these are like businesses that compete. So, and actually there were some cases where like people got that actually there were attacks like this. And the, like, it's hard to see it, where, uh, uh, that it's, uh, like, I mean, you just, you have to look at some statistics, right, to see like, so, uh, lots of partial solutions submitted and no, uh, no complete solution submitted. Some people claim that actually uh, 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 use lost money this way. No, it is true. Okay, another attack is uh, uh, called lie in wait. And it's like this, I mine for several mining pools and I devote like one third of computing power to each of them, okay? I have three, three, three machines. And when I, then I say I find a solution for P2, okay? Then I wait with submitting it and I mine for P2 only, okay? So what is the result? Now, I know that P2 is a likely winner, okay? Because I have already a complete solution for him. Uh, so, uh, and I submit the solution to him after some time, like 30 seconds, for example, okay? But since I'm now mining only for P2, I'm all, I'm, I, I know which, which guy is going to win out of this, okay? So this is profitable for me because uh, I'm getting paid for each share, and uh, I'm getting now paid. I, I know I will be paid for, uh, for this. Okay? So I mean, I'm not going to continue with it, but you can see again the payment of money, uh, many uh, uh, KNI is it's, it's, it's profitable. Okay. okay, one thing that is not in this paper I wanted to tell you about, uh, it's, uh, uh, this is a very interesting idea. I think it's not that much used in practice, but it's interesting because it also shows something called side channels in Bitcoin. So, so the thing is, if we are living in this uh, distributed environment, uh, why don't we make a distributed mining pool? Right? Uh, we don't like trusted servers, so we don't like trusted uh, mining pool operators, so let's make a distributed mining pool. Okay? And the question is how to do it, again, in a situation where nobody trusts anyone. Right? Uh, so the idea is like this. So let n be the current hardest parameter. And we create, so this is the last block on which we mine. Okay? And we create a kind of a sm an artificial blockchain that starts with this B1. And I will denote this block like, sorry, BY, BI. I will denote like BI1, BI2, and so on. Okay? And the idea is this will be a block, uh, a blockchain. This is somehow, these blocks are linked. And I'll tell you in a moment how. But at the same time, all these blocks are valid extensions of V1. Okay? And the only difference is that the hardness parameter and prime is much smaller than n. Okay? So say uh, uh, every 30 seconds there is a new extension, not every 10, 10 minutes. And I mean, uh, so the question is, 
how to do it, right? So we want to have like a situation where each of those, B, B, I1, BI2, is an extension of BI, and then uh, at the other hand, you want that they are linked. I will tell you why in a moment. So how to do it? So it turns out there is a space for this in, in blocks, because blocks anyway have a lot of redundancy. They have this place for transactions, okay? So, so okay, so, so, so look at it like this. So there is this block, okay? It has something, okay? This is BI, okay? So now, I take this uh, hash of uh, this block, right? This is hash of BI, and this is how a normal block looks, okay? So this is BI once, has a NAS, has this hash, has this transactions, okay? Now I hash it, and BI2 will look like this. It will have a hash of BI when, in this place where it is supposed to have it, okay? But in one extra place, it will also have a hash of BI1. Okay. So, so this is called a side chain. It's, also, it's like a chain built on top of a Bitcoin uh, blockchain. Okay. And the reason why I can do it is I can, since there is a lot of space here for writing transactions, I can just artificially put a record here that gives this hash. Okay. So I create a chain on top of a chain. Okay. Is, this, is this clear? I, I, I can do it. And the important thing is that all of those blocks should be also valid extensions of BI. Okay. And now I do like this. So finally, some of those guys in this peer-to-peer -peer blockchain, peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, uh, mining pool, he will find uh, 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 a block that accidentally is a valid extension because he was looking just to extend this. So he was looking just for n prime zeros, but uh, he's just lucky and he, uh, this will also end with n zeros, okay? And then this simply enters the main blockchain, right? So because this is already a valid extension of B1, this BIK, so we make it just BA plus one, okay? And what was happening there on the special field but it's not important for other Bitcoin users, it's just there, okay? If this is like, let's call it final, okay? This is the final. And now the thing is, like how to, is, is this clear? So, so we, we kind of departed from, blo from Bitcoin, we did something outside, that is the, the, the time was shorter, and then we go back. Luckily we can do it because we're preparing uh, uh, blocks like this. Now how to divide revenue from mining? So. So there is some formula for dividing revenue, and this is not important really which formula we use. So we can decide we use uh, this exponential method or whatever. There is some formula how to divide. And this basically says this, so, so basically so this guy, this guy just mines on top of this one, okay? But this guy, P2, he has to give some money to the previous guy, according to this formula, okay? So this includes a payment to P1, okay? This one will include the payment to P1 and P2. Okay. So this Coinbase, it can actually go to many addresses. It's not a problem. You can make like this, that 25 from out of this 25, uh, you give some money to this one, some money to this one, some money to this one. Now, why would P2 include uh, payment to P1? I mean, it would be natural for him not to do it because he just wants to have all this 25 for himself. So why would he do it? Because otherwise the miners are Yes. So the, again, we are in the same thing. that the, When I'm choosing transactions, I don't know if I will succeed or not, right? So of course, like if I knew in advance that I would be the last one, the final one, then I have no reason to give money to the previous ones. But I don't know it, right? So, so, if, I want, so if I want to be in a situation that if I find a partial solution, it, then it will still be counted, I should have this formula, because otherwise, otherwise, if this is missing, if the statements back are missing, then the next one in the chain will simply not consider my, my extension value. Right? So this means that if I want to be a part of this team, I have to behave nicely because if I don't behave nicely, then they will not consider me uh, like part of the club. Okay. So it's a, it's, it's a great idea, and it's actually nice that you can do these things in Bitcoin, although I'm sure that Satoshi didn't have it in mind when he was designing these things, that still like Bitcoin allows to do things like this, okay. like building a, a blockchain on top of. Yes, so that's what I said before, right? That 
since you don't know in advance if you'll be a winner or not, you have to uh, include it. OK, so that was it about uh, 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 mining pools. Now I have slides about security of Bitcoin. And uh, we still have some time before lunch. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. OK, so, uh, okay, so, uh, um, so there is. So there is one technical part here, and this I think we'll leave for after lunch. But uh, until we arrive to this point, we can uh, we can talk. Uh, okay. So uh, because I don't want them to, to to interrupt in the middle of the technical part. Okay. So what are the possible attack goals? So what wh why would be the reason? What would be the reason why people would like to attack Bitcoin? Okay? Except of like getting like you know, one more publication <laughs> uh, somewhere <laughs> on some conference. Like why would be like real real reason? What would be the real reasons for 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 attacking? So one is double spending, right? You spend. Uh, like you buy something expensive, or maybe you exchange bitcoins for dollars or something like this, uh, so you get this ten, hundred thousand dollars, and then you cancel this transaction, but you already keep, keep the dollars, right? Double spending is not a natural goal. Uh, then get more money from mining. Okay, this would also count as an attack. As I told you, uh, bitcoin should be designed this way that. Uh, uh, you get proportionally expected value proportional to what you uh, uh, computing power you have, but maybe you can find a method where you can actually get more money than uh, you should, and then everything kind of uh, starts to collapse, right? Because if people have an uh, have an incentive not to behave according to the rules of the protocol, uh, and then they will be rewarded more than they should, then at the end nobody will behave according to the rules of the protocol, and who knows what will happen? Okay, and this is actually the attack uh, that I'm going to discuss later. It, it, it gives you this. Plus, it actually works like this: that the, 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 more, the bigger group you have, the, the more uh, money you get. So the, the, uh, your your reward is even higher, which means that it incentivizes people to to, to create huge coalitions. Uh, then uh, they have this, uh, attacks. Uh, well, you can do short selling, right? So there is uh, the things on the in the economics that you can bet on some event that will happen, and you can say, okay, uh, let. Uh, uh, let me bet that uh, Bitcoin will go to, 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 to zero or to some like to below one dollar, or say for example take a credit in Bitcoins, right? So if you want Bitcoin to be like a mature currency, it should be possible to take credit in Bitcoin. They say, okay, I take uh, 100 uh, uh, Bitcoins in uh, a credit of 100 Bitcoins, and then I work hard on like making Bitcoins collapse, and then I will have to give much less back okay, in terms of dollars, right? Uh, and then we can also have like a government or someone interested in, 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 uh, in shutting Bitcoin down. Uh, and they have some legal means to do it, like they can bro block the protocol probably or things like this, but they can also try to attack the protocol. And uh, it's like some governments don't like Bitcoin, right? Including like in Europe now, they were saying that the, the terrorist attacks in, the, uh, in, uh, uh, in Belgium or in Paris were, were actually financed uh, using Bitcoin. So, so they may have some reasons like this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not clear if they would do it this way or if they would do it like uh, like legal, like it's a legal method. Well, anyway, that's called the gold finger attack. Uh, These two, uh, two, 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 two last bullet points. So, uh, so basically, the thing, thing is like, because here, here you could do something like in the first two attacks, you can still look like, you know, Bitcoin is working okay, it's just that you are benefiting somehow, you are doing uh, things that are good for you. Here, this attack means destroying Bitcoin, right? And how to do it? So uh, it's it's more like a you know, psych, uh, psychology or uh, uh, social science question. It's like how would people behave if something like very spectacular happens that like people don't expect? Like for example, now we learn that there is a new blockchain that uh, started yesterday uh, at noon. Okay, so like and, and all transactions from like last 24 hours are are cancelled. Okay, because there is like a new blockchain like empty, for example, without transactions. Okay. People could lose totally faith in Bitcoin, and then they would say, uh, "I mean, probably the price of Bitcoin would drop, uh, and uh, uh, or maybe maybe even go to zero, right? Because people would uh, suddenly realize it's not that secure as they think." Okay, so there, this, I think these are like realistic attacks that can happen, okay? and uh, uh, and we're going to talk about them. So, uh, so what is known about Bitcoin security? So. Uh, yeah, there are these things. Uh, I think uh, so I classified them as like, technical errors. So some things that are simply like, clearly like bugs or things like this in software. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. Uh, it's not that interesting from like scientific point of view, but I think it's worth mentioning. 
Then there are like features or problems or things that are not clear if they are really errors, but uh, it's kind of clear that they should be designed differently. If someone really like, if you had like academic discussion about Bitcoin before deploying it, probably they would, this would be done differently. Uh, then there are some like uh, conceptual errors. So this is like this particular selfish mining attack that I'm going to describe. So like attack for this, like you can show that what Satoshi was claiming is, 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 is inaccurate. And then there are like, potential threats, so things like that people think that may be a problem in the future, but it's not clear if it will be a problem. And then there are some little problems with that. Uh, I think at this I have only one slide here, but but you should keep it in mind that there is a big problem with like how to store this the keys, like storing lots of money in form of like digital like just bits uh, is, 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 is a challenge. Okay, so what are the notable programming errors? Uh, uh, so this is basically just to show you that things are not, you know, like nothing is perfect, right? So, uh, so there is this, uh, 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 so there was a block in August 2010 which contained two transactions uh, with output summing to 184 uh, billion uh, bitcoins. It was due to some integer uh, overflow and what they did is they made a manual fork. Uh, so they simply reverted back uh, the blockchain. The miners agreed to do it. There was one double spending observed. Uh, then there was a fork caused by uh, an update in uh, Bitcoin software. So some, uh, it was I think a result of one of these Bitcoin improvements. So some some uh, uh, miners were uh, aware of some change and some not, and this led to a situation where there were like two versions of a blockchain, and it lasted six hours, and it was reverted. They they they, they resolved by reverting the old version. Uh, so but the moral is that like nothing is completely distributed in this world, right? So so so, so there are some people always behind them. like here they, uh, or here some people concrete people needed to to say look like something bad is happening let's let, let's do something. Okay? Uh, okay, then there is this uh, thing called uh, 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 transaction uh, malleability uh, that is sort of like an interesting uh, uh, problem because it's. Uh, 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 it's not really a, an error, but it's something that should be designed a different way. It should have been designed in a different way. So transactions are identified by their hashes. Okay? So when I talk, when I say transaction something, I mean like a hash of it. Okay? So and the hash is taken over all data here. Okay? So uh, uh, the payload and the signature. Okay? This is transaction identifier. And as a result, one can change the transaction identifier without knowing the secret key. So I can, in particular, uh, there is this concept of mulling a signature. So if I have a message and a signature, and I don't know the secret key that was used to produce the signature, I still can produce a signature sigma prime uh, that is a correct signature on the same message, but it's a different signature sign uh, syntactically. Okay? And it's a property of this particular uh, uh, signature scheme. Okay? Uh, so how to do it? So I mean, I'm not going to go into the details of it, but basically, so so this is this uh, ECDSA signature scheme that is like a pair, pair R and S. And if you take uh, uh, R and S, if you take R minus S, then it will also be a valid, valid signature. If this is minus in some group. It doesn't matter so much. Anyway, the important thing is. Uh, this is something usually people would not consider as an attack on signature schemes. Because it's not like I'm forging anything, I'm just changing syntactically how the signature looks. Okay? Like, this attack is trivially possible, for example, if a signature scheme contains like a redundant bit at the end, right? So things like this. Okay? So simply, if there is some redundancy in the signature, I can change the signature so it's still like a valid signature, but syntactically is a little bit different. There are also other methods based on this non-standard transaction that are, are allow, allow us to, to, to model. Okay? So what the adversary can do is he can broadcast a transaction. Actually, I mean, if, 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 a, if a user broadcasts a transaction, an adversary can sit with, between him and blockchain and, and model it. Okay? So create a transaction that has the same semantics. So he's not stealing any money here. Just that syntactically is, it has some different bits. Okay? And as a result, the hash will be different. Okay. So if I'm sending some transaction on the blockchain, and I know it has some identifier, it may end up as a transaction with a different identifier. Okay. 
And we actually have some experiments that are actually easy to perform in practice. It's like 50% you succeed just uh, without much effort. Eh? So is it a problem? Eh? Most of cases it's not a problem because it's in semantically the same the same transaction. Okay. Uh, but still, something is no wrong. So it's a problem with Bitcoin contracts, which is something I can talk about. I uh, will talk about later. With Bitcoin contracts. Uh, uh, it's actually cause huge problems, this transaction malleability there. And another thing is buggy software, okay? And this is kind of a lesson that, I mean, people, many people say that uh, when we design crypto, we should not only care about crypto being secure, but also uh, the standards should be written in such a way that uh, uh, the developers that you later use the standards are not likely to implement it in the wrong way, okay? And this, this is precisely this place where uh, it shows up. So. The developers were told that uh, transaction is identified by its hash, right? And then they don't, they are not aware simply that this uh, identifier can change uh, when transaction is, is, uh, enters the blockchain. Okay? Uh, especially because in normal circumstances it doesn't uh, happen, so if you just test your software it will work, okay. So this was actually the claimed attack on Mount Gox. Uh, nobody believes that uh, actually this was the truth, but Mount Gox, this, uh, when this like half a billion dollars disappeared, they claimed that they are innocent and they were just victims of attack and they blamed, blamed uh, the malleability problem. So this is when everybody started to talk about malleability in the Bitcoin community. So, so basically what they claimed, but it's, it doesn't make much sense, but, but what they claimed is that, okay, so the attack was like this. So suppose that uh, there's an adversary that deposits one Bitcoin somewhere, I mean, this, uh, this in Mount Gox, and w then withdraws one Bitcoin, okay? So when he withdraws, the, the Mount Gox will simply send a transaction. Mount Gox sends one Bitcoin to A. Okay? So then this guy sits between Mount Gox and the blockchain and models it, okay? And then the Mount Gox can, uh, 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 cannot see the, the transaction with this particular identifier because the identifier is different because the transaction was moved. Okay? Uh, and then he concludes that this transaction didn't enter the blockchain. Uh, so uh, if A complains, the Mount Gox will send again this, this, this transaction and this way A can double spend. Okay? Simply, the identifier of the transaction was different, but it's still a valid transaction. And then there is a paper of Decker and Wattenhofer from Zorich. Yes? Yeah, so, so Mount Gox checks if this particular transaction with this identifier entered the blockchain, and uh, if it's stupid enough not to check if a uh, transaction with the same semantics, but uh, uh, different identifier entered, then it will conclude that, I mean, software will conclude that. And actually, my students at some point, they made some experiments with like existing Bitcoin software, and. Uh, even like a year after this, uh -huh. most of like Bitcoin clients would go crazy if you make an attack against this because they simply check if this identifier is there and was not. Uh, and but there's this interesting thing. So uh, so, so Decker and Wattenhofer, they had this. Uh, so they had this uh, 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 demon on the web that would simply monitor the Bitcoin uh, network and just record every transaction. This would be from ETH. And uh, so they could see if there is some malle uh, malleability attack happening. And what they saw is actually that there was a sharp increase in the number of malleability attacks around the time where Ma Mount Gox uh, uh, bankrupt. But when you look in detail, <laughs> it was actually like a few days after Mount Gox made this announcement, not before, which means that simply lots of people learned about this attack and tried to test it themselves. Okay? Uh, and they didn't see any increase before this. Okay, so this probably means that this Mongox was just like this. So something else happened. Okay, maybe it's time uh, to uh, 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 to make a break now.